Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Renovation Sport Fish. Um, this episode kicks off the 2016 projects. Now, if you're new to the channel or you haven't even visited the channel and you're just watching this video, you might want to visit the channel and get caught up on what's going on here. But uh, in the beginning here, I'm just going over all the projects I worked on from 2011 to uh, today, which is 2019. And, um, you know, between 2011 and 2018, almost into 2019, I'd say, um, I wasn't planning on doing anything on YouTube with this. So it's basically pictures and I'm just describing what I'm doing and going over uh, the projects I worked on. So we're trying to catch up to um, 2019 where I'm actually working on the boat. But um, in the meantime, we have uh, quite a few more episodes to go through to uh, catch up. So what you're seeing uh, in front of me here is going to be the first um, project we're going to talk about, and that's um, fabricating the guardrails on the flybridge. Uh, and I'm going to get into this whole contraption uh, in a little more detail in a minute, but we're also going to um, look at the um, face frame that I built for the bulkhead window uh, that I started putting in on the last episode. Um, and then, um, what else? Uh, we're going to look at uh, some of the changes and modifications I started to do to the, uh, the door hatch, um, the hatch that goes over the actual door to enter into the uh, cabin. And um, then I go through some uh, some of the navigation lights that I decided to go with. I relocated them, so you'll see uh, what I was doing there. And um, and that's uh, basically it. So let's get started with the uh, guardrail stuff. Okay, so now we're a little bit closer here, and uh, this is what I uh, designed and built, I guess, to uh, bend the tubing. And uh, this massive vise right here is something my father-in-law kind of found for me. He knew some guy that had this thing sitting around. Guy was looking to get rid of it and um, I said I'd take it. I had no use for it at the time but I said well it's a massive vice. It's really cool. It came out of some big old machine shop and um, I just set it aside in my garage until I decided to use it for this. Now this thing weighs. I don't know how much this thing weighs but it's massive and uh, it's really cool old piece. I'm glad I'm able to use it for something. So I built this cradle for it out of 2x4s and I physically clamp it to my workbench which is um, actually bolted to the floor. So that gives it stability so it's not going to be shifting around when I'm building this. And then this piece here is the actual an actual bender that I actually modified to uh, do this project and I'll get into this detail on this uh, now. Alright so this is the actual tube bender that I ended up buying. Now I looked for a whole tube bending kind of machine or something and they were all like thousands of dollars and uh, I didn't think it was really practical to uh, spend that much money on just a few tubes. So anyways I found this one by a company called um, Hillmore. I don't know if you can read this on here. Probably not. H-I-L-M-O-R and it has the right size die, which is 7 8 uh, for the tubing I was using. Uh, in hindsight, I wish I would have gone with 1 inch, but the factory used 7 8 uh, So I used 7 8 but I'm not going to change it now. And uh, this original bender came with a handle, like this one here. Uh, this is the one, actually, I cut it off because I don't need it when I'm using the vise. And there's another one over here that's still in place that's actually slid into this larger diameter tube that I actually use for the leverage to, to actually bend it. This is all, this area over here that I got my hand over is all what I modified on this thing to, uh, to make it work for what I'm doing. So you would just have these two little handles uh, to bend tubing with. I don't know, maybe it was just designed for uh, something softer, but I don't, I didn't think it would work good for the uh, stainless steel tubing I was using. So I cut off this end on this one, cut the handle off, and um, on this side, what I ended up doing 
was adding this longer piece of pipe. Now this pipe I had sitting around um, was actually, I had visions of building a drag race car and I had it in there as my roll cage, part of it, and uh, decided not to drag race so I cut it all out. So I had all this pipe sitting around. So that was, that was convenient. And uh, to get into where I actually modified it, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Okay. And so, like I said, this handle is still on this side over here. And it's shoved down into this tube. And this is where it pops out on this side. Uh, now I welded this, I made this bracket that's welded to uh, the larger tube all the way around both sides. And then I fabricated these plates. Uh, they just kind of sandwich uh, this piece on both sides. They're just loose plates. Uh, so they just make a connection between this bracket I made and the actual tube bender. And I'll flip it so you can see. Well, maybe I have to zoom out a little bit here. Hold on. Yeah. You can see how it's sandwiched in between two plates. There's the other side. Same plates on the opposite side. Uh, and what's good about that is if I buy another one of these dies or benders, I could just uh, put this uh, breaker bar or whatever you want to call it just bolt it on there. So I just had to drill two holes in the flange of this piece uh, to uh, actually attach the two together. And I'm not going to take it apart but there's two holes here where these two bolts are. So that's how the thing's all built and now I'll put it in the vise and we can uh, see it in action. Okay so here it is uh, clamped into the vise and the handle sticking out over there. I think I just have enough room to miss the leg of uh, my saw here. Scrolling saw. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, now I'll get a piece of tube and um, we'll put it in there and we'll try to bend it. Okay, so before I bend anything, I like to put a little bit of grease on the, in the channel and on the rollers themselves. Uh, I feel like it just... Uh, makes things go a little better and doesn't scratch the uh, tubing. Uh, so I put it in this little holder piece and on these rollers here and in this uh, channel. Now this has like a degree uh, gauge on it. I'll just bend one to 90 or 45, I don't know. Uh, and this is the tubing I'm going to bend. This is what I use, 7 8 2. This is a piece actually I, it's good to show because it's a screw up piece. Uh, you see on this inside radius, maybe you can't, but there's like uh, some bumps here. And that was because I found out that it, um, if I didn't do one smooth motion with it uh, and kind of jerked it a little, it would put these bumps in here. So this was a throwaway piece and I learned something on it. Uh, so it's good for use for a test here. So we'll just put it in. And we just slide it in here. Wherever you want to build it. Right there is pretty good. And then you just pull on this and it'll just bend it around. You got to use some pretty good force to do it. And just keep going and don't stop. Of course, it's going to be difficult to get it out of there because. I don't have a lot of room here, but... And, uh... Here's the finished uh, product. It's got to be clean, but... came out pretty good. Uh, and so that's how I made the guardrails. And bent them. So... Now we can, uh... Look at the, uh... Guardrails that I actually did.
Okay, so now that you know how I bend the tubing, I can show how I um, put the bent pieces up on and fit them up on the flybridge. Uh, but before that, I'll have to mention that um, under all the base fittings, I installed what I call a leveling pad. And it's basically a quarter inch piece of marine grade plywood that I cut out with a hole saw on my drill press. And then uh, in the photo here, you're seeing it being fiberglass or pre-fiberglass before I actually install them. So um, I put these under all the base fittings for the guardrails. Okay, we're going to look at the, um, the door hatch. Now, uh, this is an ongoing project, still not done yet, but just to fit it into the actual uh, curb that it sits on. Uh, I stripped out all the plywood that the factory had on the inside surface of it, put new plywood on, tried to remove the big bow that was in the center by screwing on some one by material on the top. You'll see that while I was fitting it. And then I just added some plywood strips and things that are going to be uh, the final interior uh, surface. So let's check it out. In this little project here, I um, modify the uh, supports for the uh, door hatch curb. Uh, I did the same type of modification at the uh, ladder for the ladder trim area. 
and because um, I didn't like the supports, I thought they were a little too beefy, um, so I cut the bottoms off. Well, I do the same thing here. So. Well, in the last episode, I showed the installation of the uh, window frame and window trim behind me here on the main bulkhead. Now I'm going to show the uh, fabrication of the exterior uh, window face frame. Now, in the factory, it was made out of plywood and painted, but I made it out of uh, solid mahogany and I'm going to uh, varnish it. Um, so this is just a fit up. Uh, it's too cold to actually install it. So we'll get into that uh, on a future episode. Okay, we're going to close out with this segment um, talking about the uh, installation of the navigation lights, uh, mainly the uh, side lights, port and starboard light. Now, originally these were mounted on the tow rails. Um, a lot of extra wiring to get them there. It was a source of leaking, and uh, I didn't feel like pulling these things off every time I wanted to uh, re-varnish the tow rails. So um, I decided to mount them on the side walls on the flybridge. I've seen them mounted this way on other boats and I thought it's a good idea. Uh, the wiring is right up there, the switch is right there. So it would be a lot simpler to, to do it that way. And originally I was going to use just like regular incandescent bulb side lights, just standard ones you could find anywhere. Uh, but then I found these um, cast stainless ones that have uh, LEDs and I decided to go with those. Now they're a little bit different, they're kind of football shaped. They have to be mounted on a 27 degree angle because they're meant to be mounted kind of on the bow of the boat. Um, so I had to build these little, um, I guess you'd call them wedges, uh, football shaped type of things. And I made them out of solid mahogany, uh, fiberglass them and then fit them in. So uh, check out um, these navigation lights. And at the end of it, there's a few pictures of uh, sanding of the side deck. to the end of another video or maybe it's your first one or you fell asleep during it and you're just waking up either way that's going to put a wrap on this week's video um was released a little bit later than i wanted to because i was uh finishing off some fiberglassing in the boat it's like the last uh big blast of uh, warm weather where i could actually do it um so the good news with that being done i can get on a more consistent um, schedule for releasing these videos so that's good um, so anyways, I'd like to thank everyone for watching and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, check out the uh, channel if you haven't checked it out. Um, catch up to where we're at. And um, everyone have a good one. And uh, we'll see you soon right here on Renovation Sports.